I'm here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona with Rob Hughes, who's the head of wireless marketing at Fujitsu. Hi, Rob. Happy to be here. Yeah, it's a fantastic show. I hope you're enjoying it. I am. So let's start with OpenRAN. And who does OpenRAN benefit most? And how does it increase operator flexibility? Well, I'd like to say that it uh, pretty much helps everybody. Um, but the reason's going to be different for different operators. Uh, in a traditional RAN network, people will often have a big RFP, do lots of analysis, and then choose whoever has the best solution at, at that moment in time and in the near future. But uh, once they make that decision, they're kind of locked in. So whether they choose to prioritize high performance or whether they choose low cost, uh, they're, they're kind of stuck with that and don't really have the flexibility to take advantage of new innovations that might be coming out. With Open RAN, that always all changes and, and people can have different solutions. So for example, if an operator decides, they let's say they acquire another company, for example, and they suddenly need a multi-band radio that can support some unusual combination of frequencies, if their traditional existing vendor doesn't supply it, they can source that from somebody else. Or I've heard of scenarios where uh, operators will complain that a given software feature that they want is either unavailable or not available in the time frame they need it. And uh, again, if with an open RAN solution, they have the flexibility to go and source that from somebody else. So it's not just a question of price versus performance, it's really now about who offers the best solution and making sure that you've got the flexibility going forward after that initial decision to change things up and take advantage of the next innovations. So open RAN sounds like it could really have a lot of benefit, but some really question its readiness. So where are we with the commercial deployment of open RAN? Well, uh, open RAN is already fairly widely deployed around the world in a number of operators. Uh, there are commercial deployments like in, in Rakuten. Uh, Dish has deployed thousands and thousands of radios already. Um, and it's not just in greenfield environments. If we look at uh, NTT and KDDI in Japan, both of those have deployed uh, extensive uh, deployments with ORAN, where it's coexisting with existing 4G technologies quite well in brownfield deployments. So one of the biggest questions and one of the most important things about ORAN is interoperability. So how can RAN operators have confidence that, that these RAN, you know, these components will work cohesively? It's a very good question, and you know, open RAN is kind of a new concept. Open networking is new to the RAN environment, but it's not really a new concept in general for other kinds of networks. For optical networks, for example, have, have been using open networking for quite some time. So Fujitsu has been building, deploying, and maintaining networks for, for, for quite a while. Um, some operators are concerned, you know, how are they going to not just do the initial integration, but maintain it over the entire life cycle of that product? Uh, and I think the key that we have discovered is that it's really about having a sort of a systematic process that you're following rigorously. So every time there's a, there's a new release or new patching or something like that that comes out, that you're going back and doing the regression testing uh, and, uh, and thoroughly making sure that everything is available. Uh, now to do this effectively with all the different variables that can be happening, um, we, have, we rely a lot more on automation now. Uh, so there's a new advances in automation that we're taking advantage of to make that a little bit more economical process for, for doing that level of testing. Yeah, when you say we, I assume you mean Fujitsu. So of let's, course. <laughs> let's, uh, for my last question, talk a bit more specifically about what the company is doing in this space and how your approach is different maybe from some other players. Sure. So um, I think one of the big things is that history that we have as a, as a pioneer in open networking. Um, we've been heavily involved with the Open RAN Alliance uh, as well as TIP. Um, with the uh, open networking automation platform. Uh, I think a good one is, is Open Rotom for optical networking, where they're already easily able to miss and match transponders from different, different vendors quite easily. And when we take part in these kinds of initiatives, we're often brought in uh, to provide the, the control and, and management functions as well as just hardware. So we've inherently become kind of a systems integrator where we're working with all the different vendors who are bringing equipment to these, to these initiatives uh, and trying to work out the problems. So it really becomes kind of a, a, some institutional knowledge that we've developed about how to do project management in multi-vendor networks uh, well when you're working with a bunch of competitors uh, and trying to bring those competitors together so that you can produce a, a cohesive solution that works for the operator. Great. I mean, Rob, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me here. I'm glad you could come by. Yeah.